from somebody who said there's care and there's protection. And all they are doing is the, the, the protect, the protect, and they're not looking at the care. We can remind them of their training. That is why we have Pastor Chica. So all I'm saying is that just keep your faith, keep praying. Together, we're going to solve this because none of us like what's happening to our community. No. And we intend to make sure all our children are... To just say briefly that um, I know we've... Uh, I, I know we've had difficult and different experiences from um, social workers. Um, uh, I'm not trying to defend my profession. Um, I, I'm a social worker by profession, but I wanted to say that um, there are also always two sides of the coin. And um, we need to take that into consideration. Um, uh, hopefully my insight of being a social worker will be helpful for us um, to understand the other side of that coin as well, uh, while we are experiencing the other side of it so that we can uh, both come together to see a way forward on both sides of that coin. Thank you. Welcome. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay, sorry. Cool. Sorry, Esther, yeah. Yes, thank you so much, Councillor. Yes, we, we, we said it earlier that local authority have the right and the duty of care towards children and also have the right to intervene. And most of them are genuine and some of them are, they, they get their jobs. All right, but our we are not here to appraise the social workers whether they are doing a good job or not. We are just here to empower ourselves so that they don't even intervene at all in our families. So I just wanted to uh, bring perspective to that. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you so much for that. That's uh, that's almost like a question and answer now. Pastor Chika is not trying to scare us. I remember the first time I came to this program, I was like, oh, they're watching everything. They have their eyes in everything. Oh my God, I can't sleep. I must watch my children. Somebody's going to take them away. And I spoke to a social worker who's also an African, who's also a pastor. And she told me, no, relax. No one is trying to take your kids from you. But yeah. what they're trying to do is make you a better parent. And if they say to you, okay, fire burns, doesn't mean that you should, every time you should look cook with fire. Say fire burns, don't cook with fire. You know what I'm saying? So um, thank you so much for that, Councillor Faber. And thank you for the response, Pastor Chika. We also have Auntie Caroline's hand is up. Auntie Do Dr. Shola's hand is up. I think that was the one that was up first. So Dr. Shola followed by Dr. Welma. If that's right. Then Auntie Caroline, you've been fed. Is that okay? Yeah. Yes, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, I call you lawyer, everything, lawyer chica. <laughs> You know, that was very, very inspirational and insightful, you know, for me. I wish I can attend tomorrow. I wanted to ask, what time is it holding tomorrow? The program tomorrow. Esther. Yeah, it's yes. back to back course, uh, 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. Tomorrow, and same thing on Saturday next week and Sunday. So right. that would be the complete module. For you to have a certificate for this course, you have to attend the four modules and also submit your case study work as an yes. assessment. Okay. Yes, uh, like what uh, Brother Ola said, a lot of local authorities are acknowledging what we are doing here and they ask for reports. If, uh, if a parent is uh, having uh, any conferences or any issues with uh, local authority, they request for reports. So I want to let you know that we encourage you to attend the whole four. If you miss one, God forbid, we are not wishing anybody to have any issues. We will not be able to uh, write any report because we are not sure if you learned what was taught. So because we have to defend ourselves because most times when they request for that report, they also want us to be part of that conference. So we should be able to defend what we have taught that you participated fully, please. Do participate fully. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, Esther, go ahead. Yes, we also have Dr. Velma. Dr. Velma, are you still here? Yes, I am. All right, Ma, you, you have the floor. Yes, I just want to point out um, to my sister Chica that I have worked in social services at the hard end of child protection, the child protection unit. I want to inform you that um, not all social workers have our children's best interests at heart. So it's very important 
that your equally the social workers should be having competency training um, to deal with our families. And we also need to understand, I mean, I taught many social workers in conferences, be it physical chastisement, yeah. GM, be it forced marriage. I've been looking to them many times because they say, which side are you on? Because I'm fighting on behalf of the community, although I'm in social services. So please understand, however much social services want to engage with your group, they do so in the sense that we need to ensure they are equally providing frontline staff with cultural competency training. And only when you feel they are trusted should you really be engaging because they need to be seen to be working with the community, but it is very important that they are not working to get information. Yes? So at all times, please ensure they have cultural competency training to engage with your group. Thank you. Oh, thank you so much, Doctor. Um, I, I want to assure you, uh, Brother Ola and myself and other people like um, Councillor Nana uh, said earlier on, uh, that we, we do not just stop at this training. We support parents. So we also um, discussing and reaching out to the uh, uh, councillors, uh, to the leaders of councils, the uh, children's departments, uh, raising up the issues of institutional racism, bias and all that. We are, we are also uh, doing that. We are also encouraging them, the local authorities to train the social workers in issues of um, um, uh, diversity. It's very important, we are pushing it. And uh, it will be good if all of us go ahead doing that in our own uh, little corners, the, our council of favor. So if there is a place among the social workers that you can also raise it, it will be very important so that uh, parents are respected, our culture is respected and understood. We are not misinterpreted and misrepresented. Thank you. We, we have um, um, in the curriculum of social work now because I'm also a practice educator mm -hmm. uh, for social workers. So we have uh, in the curriculum now, uh, cultural competence okay. and uh, equality and diversity and unconscious bias. Um, as part of the curriculum now. Okay. So I, I am a practice educator. I have such students on that as well. But having said that, it's just unfortunate that the core function of a social worker, we, we, in social model, we, say, we call it care and control. We have two core functions, care and control. Those are the two sides of the coin I was referring to. Okay. But it's just unfortunate that the one that comes out most of the time is the control one and not the care one. So it's always a dilemma to balance the two the, because we're there primarily to function on the care model, not necessarily on the control function, yeah. but because we're also agents of the states. So we function on the control function, but the primary focus of a social worker is on the care model. Yeah. And this is what, what I was trying to say, but we just don't, didn't want to take our time then, that when we see social workers, we, the, it's not just to intervene uh, to take away uh, children when they're at risk. It's Mark, I just want to make a point clear within that area, uh, the importance of social work. The local authority are meant to promote the welfare being on the, on the meeting. Hello? Go ahead. Is someone coming? Is someone so say something? No, 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 just some. Sorry. Okay. In, like uh, I was saying, the local authority, they are meant to safeguard, to promote welfare, well being of family, for children to thrive and to stay safe at home. But from the experience and from a couple of work we've done so far since 2019, we need to realize if a referral is being made to local authority, the problem is what are the level of those referrals? Do, is there anyone checkmate it? Are they made in good faith? Just within the two weeks now, we've safely protected four children 
from taking through the stress of child protection plan due to a racially motivated referral from the school. Just because parents make a complaint of not treating their child well, of bullying their child, of calling their children names, sort of Afrophobia names. And those school, they now went ahead, make a referral that children say this, children say that, and asking leading questions. So we are working in partnership with local authority now, with a lot of referral from Manchester, Newcastle, there are a lot of social workers that are referring students now. On this course, particularly one now, we were having some parents that are already with local authority. They are working with them now. They refer them for this course. So our one of the problem now is over 63% of referral are coming from schools. So we need to let the local authority know. They need to check all those referrals, verify, investigate thoroughly. If they are being made in good faith, because it's costing government a lot of money. Just 2019, 9.96 billion pounds were spent on children in care. And some of the cases we dealt with, the particular case that started this course, that we started this course, is about a parent that was racially motivated, reported to school uh, by the school to the local authority. And at the end of the day, the school were the one fostering these children. It's a conflict of interest. They lobby to foster the children when they are the one that made a referral. So there's a conflict of interest in referral making to local authorities. Local authorities are doing their job because this is a safeguarding issue. But we need to work along with them to let them know, check where those information are coming from. Are they part of systemic racism, discrimination from schools? And all our parents don't attend any meeting with any of this agency without having a support advocacy. You need to look for a community advocate, an activist, human rights, well-experienced social worker that is culturally competent to support you in any meeting. Thank you. Yeah, uh, let me add to this. Uh, uh, thank you so much for that, that's so true. Uh, another issue is uh, like um, Councillor Fevor said uh, that uh, social workers are are meant to support everybody. But by my experience, the social workers just focus on the children and the fact that it comes uh, their voice against the parents. There's no support at all for parents. Rather, every step of the parents are used against them. Especially, uh, so this is my observation. So those things need to be addressed. Thank you.